Hello, everybody. I hope you're having a good day wherever you are. I hope you're having a, a wonderful weekend as well. As you know, we'll be starting in about 25 seconds if you have a look at the timer. I'm just going to check to make sure everything is working properly. I think it is but uh I still like to make sure. So, we'll be starting in about eight seconds. Three, two, one. Well, hello and welcome to this live English lesson. This is a lesson where the intent is for me to try and answer your questions. This is a lesson where using the form that will be shared in the chat, you can submit a question and I will do my best to answer it. Sometimes, I think I give pretty good answers and sometimes I give okay answers. Answers that are just I think usually useful for you but sometimes when I watch them later, I think oh, I could have explained that better. Anyways, it's good to see all of you here. I see a lot of regulars are here already. I saw that uh Rod, the English teacher is here. Mode Eggs is here. Todd is here moderating. Thanks for being here, Todd. I think Dave will show up in a bit. Uh also, if I scroll back, I see Kaiseta, Eugene, O Philosopho, Mickey. Uh, American English with this guy. Brent is here. Good to see you, Brent. Hope your teaching is going well down there in Maine in the United States. Um don't wanna spend too much time talking. I want to get the lesson started as soon as possible. I should though say thanks to Hassan for becoming a member. You'll see that Hassan in the chat. You'll see the green there. That means Hassan has become a member. Couple things before we get started. Number one, if you do have a question, please click the link in the chat and use the form to submit it. I only answer questions from the form. I'll do my best to get through as many as possible. You'll see that I'm inside today. We're in my studio slash office slash living room. This room has many uses uh because outside, it's a little bit windy And that's not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is that it's only about one or two degrees. So, the wind combined with the temperature made me decide to stay inside today. Oh, see Dave's here now. Hi, Dave. Good to see you as well. So, we're inside today. I think we'll probably be inside for the rest of the fall winter season and then I'll start going outside again in the spring. Um you can see too that the leaves are pretty much gone from the trees. There's still a few leaves on the ground but we definitely have leaves on the trees still. Uh let me see here. Why don't I get started? Why don't I do one last check of the technical? Yes, we're good to go. Let me get to the first question here. Um From Mike. Hi, Bob. Could you define these? To make a run for it, cockamamie and to fairy. Thanks. So, when you make a run for it, it usually means you're a criminal and you've done something bad and the police are arriving and you decide to either run like physically run to make a run for it or you jump in your car and try to escape uh and the police then chase you. You try to make a run for it. Uh the word cockamamie is an older word. I haven't used it for a long time if ever. I think it might be a little bit more uh British English. So, it means ridiculous uh or implausible. So, I had to look up the definition because it's not a word I use all the time. Uh in Teferi, the only uh definition I know for that verb is when you drive your car on a boat and it takes you across. It would ferry you across a body of water. Pretty common in some parts of Canada on the west coast and east coast to take a ferry every once in a while. Renata, hello, Bob. Could you please explain the phrasal verb gloss over to us? Every time I see it being used, I can never understand its meaning clearly. Thanks in advance. Well, let's get the official definition. To gloss over is the verb Uh, to treat or describe something as if it were not important. So, he glossed over the accident. So, it's when sometimes as a teacher, um I'm presenting something and I might just gloss over the instructions. So, I might not describe it as if they're important. 
Uh so, there you go. That's the definition of that phrasal verb for you, Renata. Yaroslav, morning teacher Bob. Hope you're doing well. Could you recommend any Canadian show to watch? Take care. Well, I used to watch a show called the Rick Mercer Report and if you can find it, it's not on the air anymore. The Rick Mercer Report, uh it was a person named Rick Mercer and he went to all different parts of Canada and would kind of visit like small town festivals and other things. Maybe you can find some clips of it on YouTube. Uh it's definitely worth your while to watch that show. Uh let's see here. From Arjun. Hey, Bob. How can I learn to conjugate verbs? Well, there's two ways. One is to do a lot of listening. So, you hear the verbs being used and a lot of reading. So, you see them being used. The other method is to actually from a grammar book, write out the conjugations. Write them out in sentences and try to use them. How to wish a birthday. Not the boring way. You say happy birthday. By the way, I have my mug from this summer. It says, I don't know if it will focus here. Let's pull it back. It says, cheers 50 years. So, this is my birthday mug from earlier this year. Um I had the joy of celebrating my 50th birthday and people just say happy birthday. That's literally the way we say it. Like, hey, happy birthday. Please recommend some books both for English and French. Well, Arjun, maybe ask in the comments below and I'll try to look some up. I can't think of any off the top of my head for French uh but for English, I would definitely uh, recommend reading The Pearl by Ernest Hemingway. I do still find that to be a great book for people who are learning English. Even though it doesn't take place in North America. Andre, hello. I've noticed that Canada's ministers publicly speak in English and say some French phrases in the middle. What is the purpose of that? How is the BC situation? So, First of all, the flooding in BC is receding but there is a lot of damage and so the Canadian military as well as other aid organizations are helping clean up now. There were people who were injured and lost their lives as well. So, it's just a very uh sad situation but it is starting to be over although I think they're forecasting rain for next week. As to your first question, Canada is a bilingual country. So, uh native speaking English um government officials. If you are a federal government official, you need to be able to speak French as well and when you're interviewed on the news, you need to be able to speak both languages. So, it's a sign of respect usually when you're on the news or when you're being interviewed to switch between languages. If you're a native English speaker, you'll most likely speak more in English but you'll also speak a bit of French. If you're a native French speaking Canadian uh, government official, you'll probably speak mostly in French but also speak a little bit in English just to show respect for the two languages. It's very common when I watch the news and I see Prime Minister Trudeau who's fully bilingual, he'll flip back and forth between English and French quite seamlessly. Sometimes it also depends when journalists are asking the questions. Um if the journalists uh ask the question in French, the the official will respond in French. If the question is asked in English, they'll respond in English. Uh let's see here from Betty Lou. Hi, the cutest teacher, Bob. What is the difference between stock and inventory? Thanks for answering. I hope you have a beautiful weekend. They're pretty much the same thing. Um when you have a store or a warehouse, the things that you actually have in the building, you would say you have them in your inventory or you have them in stock or you have a lot of inventory or you have a lot of stock. It simply means you have a lot of it. Uh let's see here. Walid, I want to reach fluency in English. How to get into that level and overcome the plateau? Well, I always say that learning a language is a lot like exercise. And if you go and run every day for three kilometers, eventually you reach a plateau. So, you need to do something to break through that plateau. If you're a runner, what you'll often do is you'll run your normal speed and sprint every five minutes to really challenge your body. The same thing is true when you're learning a language. If you are doing a lot of things that are very easy and comfortable, you need to start doing things that are more difficult. That's the best way to break through a plateau. Um and also do things that are fun. 
That's helpful too. It can make you love learning the language again. Let me have a little sip of water here. We'll go to an outside view for just a moment. By the way, the temperatures at night are starting to dip below zero and the temperatures during the day are usually around five to ten degrees. Right now, I think it must be about two or three degrees out there. Uh let's see here. Give a thumbs up. This must be seen in every nook and cranny says Mode Eggs. Thanks, Mode for the uh one month super chat that you get as a member. Uh let me get the other question queued up here. We have from Tina. Hello, Bob. What does the word quantity mean in the following sentence? The suspects took a quantity of cash. It means they don't know exactly how much they took. So, they took some money. They don't know if the uh, suspects took like a hundred dollars or a thousand or a million dollars. They just took a quantity of cash. So, it's a way to say you don't know exact exactly um the exact number in a situation where a number is required. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you, Tina. I'm laughing at this question. Hi, Bob. Do you lie? Well, this is a tough question, isn't it? If I said that I never lie, that would be a lie. I think everyone at some point in their lives tells little lies every once in a while. Um not always intentionally but uh do I lie? I don't think it's a fair question. I think a better question is do human beings lie? And I think the answer is yes. By the way, I I try not to. Um it's probably very rare for me to lie. I actually like the truth a lot better. It just makes life easier if you tell the truth. Brent says, member for 20 months. I only use my super chat when Mo does. <laughs> there we go. Thanks, Brent, by the way, for being a member. And Sergey, member for 10 months. Uh, all the best. Thank you very much, Sergey. Uh let's see here. Um from Kooky Mode. This is Mode Eggs. Hi, Chipper, Mr. Bob. What's the difference between having a beef with someone and having a bone to pick with them? Thanks a lot, eh? Is that is it correct to use a this way? Yeah, definitely. Thanks a lot, eh? Um they're the same. When you have a beef with someone or when you have a bone to pick with someone, it means that you're annoyed with them for some reason and you probably want to talk or have a conversation to uh kind of settle things out. But definitely when you have a beef with someone or if you have a bone to pick with them, it means exactly the same thing. It means that you're they've done something that's annoyed you. That's for sure. From Lemon Cute. Hi, Bob. Today is Teacher's Day in my country and happy Teacher's Day, Bob. Thank you very much. Wish you and your family happiness and peace and thank you for your valuable lessons. Well, thank you, Lemon Cute. Uh cool that it's Teacher's Day in your country. I shared this once before but Uh, I didn't realize that when you teach on YouTube, people will wish you happy teacher's day almost every month of the year because it's different in different countries. Um the vast majority of countries have it. I think in September was the last one but almost every month someone wishes me happy teacher's day. So, it makes me quite happy and it makes me smile uh for uh because that happens regularly. Uh next question is, from Fadil, what is homograph is what you want. Uh not homograph. So, homograph is what you want. So, homograph um is words that they're spelled the same but they're not necessarily pronounced the same. There's a lot of different types of um homographs. Let me pull up an example for a sec. Um words that have the same spelling but different meanings can be homographs. For instance, bass and bass. Uh, I think I did a homograph recently, wind and wind. So, the wind blows and you can wind up a chord. Um and there's some words where they're pronounced the same with different meanings, pronounced differently with different meanings but same spelling. Uh fun, fun language we have here called English. Next question from Natalia. Please tell us about the following words that describe a person. Dignity, humility. In your opinion, is it is it good to have such qualities? Yes. It's good to have dignity. Dignity means that you live life in a way where you do things respectfully. You are respectful of other people. You're not rude. You're not annoying. Um you 
you just do things in a positive nice way that contributes to the planet. Humility is when is the opposite of being boastful or arrogant. Um if someone said for instance um like if someone congratulated Ed Sheeran on his top like his number one song if he said um oh there's more where that came from I could write 10 more in a heartbeat. That would be arrogant but if he just said I feel really blessed with my gift to be able to write songs and I'm just appreciative of all my fans that would be humility. Should we get uh, like official meanings of each of those? Let's get a good dictionary definition of each of those. Meaning of humility. A modest or low view of one's importance or humbleness. So, that's humility. So, basically the opposite of boastful. Um and then dignity. The state or quality of being worthy or honorable or respectful. Doing things in a way that shows honor or respect. Yes. Or doing things in a composed manner or in a serious manner without humor. Well, that's a little bit of a different. I think it if you make jokes in awful situations, you don't have a lot of dignity. Okay, let's move on. Um there's a lot here from Rinku. Let me see if I can sort through this. Family reveal please. No, that will not happen. This gets asked a lot. I've decided to be on YouTube. Jen doesn't mind being on YouTube with me every once in a while but my kids didn't decide to be on YouTube. Uh so I won't be doing a family reveal anytime soon. Number two, difference between terrace, roof and ceiling. So, a terrace for me is an outdoor area usually off the ground that you can stand on. Sometimes, the top of a building will have a terrace where you can go outside on the top of a flat building. The roof for me is the top of a house from the outside and the ceiling is the upper part of a room. The flat part above me is the ceiling. Number three, why don't you vlog? Well, I'm a little busy making English lessons. Um if you do watch my second channel though, it's a little bit like a vlog sometimes. It's 10% vlogging. And then let's see here. If two sounds like two then why doesn't go sound like I'm not sure. I didn't invent how we pronounce things. Um yeah, I I don't know Rinku. I didn't invent the English language so sometimes it's hard for me to explain. And then why don't you teach French? I don't teach French because I am not a native French speaker. I am a native English speaker. So, even though I speak French, I'll leave it up to um people who are better at teaching French than me. Both uh native and non-native French teachers who are better at it than me. Um I'm just more comfortable teaching English on YouTube. Ahmed has the next question. Hi, Mr. Bob. Do you still remember me? Yes, but it's hard to remember everyone. There are a lot more people than there used to be. Uh let's see here. Why does Canada usually produce awesome people? Stay blessed. Well, because we in Canada, we share all our awesome people with the world and we keep all the non-awesome people (laughs) at home. So, in Canada, no, I'm just kidding. Um my theory is this. Because we have winter in Canada and we're all bored in the winter because there's not a lot to do, we find ways to entertain each other and then that usually starts to produce good singers and musicians and actors and maybe YouTubers as well. Um so Judith wants me to explain the difference between homophones, homographs, homonyms, antonyms. What is M and N dash? I'm not sure about the last one. Thanks. So, we went over homographs, right? Words that look the same but have different pronunciations. Um an antonym is a word with the opposite meaning. Let's do the full definition of all of these so I don't get them confused. Homophone, two words having the same pronunciation but different meanings. There you go. Let's do homograph again so we know. Two or more words spelled the same but not pronounced the same. There you go. Uh homonym is a broader category. Two words having the same spelling or pronunciation but different meanings. And then we go to antonym which is a word opposite in meaning to another such as bad and good. So, hopefully that helped you a little bit. 
I think an M dash might be something to do with typing. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Next question from Radu. Bob, what is your favorite rural area in Canada? I think where I live is my favorite area because this is where I grew up. It's not the most beautiful area of Canada. There are more beautiful places out west and in the eastern provinces. Um but where I live, I do like it. I like it that we have spring, summer, winter and fall. I like it that we have all four seasons and I like being out in the country when I see things like snowfall uh or a nice rainstorm. Jose says, hi, Bob. Are there accents in Canada just like there are in the US? Yes, but not as distinct. There is definitely an east coast accent. If you are from Newfoundland, the province of Newfoundland, you have a very distinct accent. But generally, the rest of Canada, the accent is fairly neutral and very common. Not as much variation as the United States. And then also remember that the province of Quebec, they also speak French. And there are parts of other provinces as well where you will find French speaking communities. Next question from Mickey. Hey, teacher, I have some phrasal verbs today. Can you give us some sentences using start out, start off, set off and set out? So, when you go on a big trip, you say, what time do you wanna set out tomorrow morning or what time do you wanna set off? Uh what time do you wanna start off? What time what time do you wanna start out? They're almost the same. They're all phrasal verbs used to decide what time you want to start doing something. Usually a trip. You know, we're gonna start out tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. When are you leaving? Oh, we're gonna start out at 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 8 a.m. Uh we're gonna start off on the next project in about five days. We're gonna set off or we're gonna set out. Yeah, definitely very, very similar. Um I'm surprised by that because why do we have so many then, right? So, To start off, it's to begin to operate or do something. There we go. To start out. To embark on adventure or to begin doing something. (laughs) Set out. Here we go. To begin a journey or to start doing something. Usually a journey. Okay. That's what I thought with set out and set off. And then set off is to begin a journey. So, very similar. I'm not sure we why we have so many of them. Who says Canada uses meter, kilogram and Celsius or not? Well, that's a really good question. We officially use the metric system in Canada, okay? So, we are a nation that decided many years ago to use the metric system but most people know how to tell temperature in both Celsius and Fahrenheit. Usually, older people for sure. So, if you say to me it's about 20 degrees outside or it's 71 degrees Fahrenheit, that I know what that feels like and all of our construction is still done using feet and inches. It's still done in what we call imperial measurement because the US and Canada, we do a lot of trade in the construction industry and so because we export so much wood to the US, we've kind of stuck with that measurement system. So, we're a blend of the two. If you read a blueprint in Canada, it will be in feet and inches when you build a house, not in uh metric. It's kind of weird. Uh, sometimes it's in metric though. Sometimes it's in both. Um from Ario, hola, Mr. Bob. I have two questions. First, how is your French learning? French learning. Second, Spider-Man No Way Home will be on air in December. Are you ready to watch it? Thank you. Yes, I will definitely be watching that. How's my French learning going? Really good. I changed my routine this past week. So, I'm getting up really early and instead of walking along the road, I'm walking laps in my driveway and I'm listening to French music and that has really helped my French this past week. I find it's a lot easier to switch into speaking French when I do that. Renan, hey, Bob, can you tell me the difference between anger and angry? So, you would say he is angry. He is an angry man. You're using it as an adjective but he has anger. You're using it as a noun. So, they both refer to someone being annoyed or mad, etc, etc but angry is definitely the adjective version and then anger is definitely the noun. Let me explain that again. He is angry or he is an angry man 
You're using angry as an adjective to describe the man. You would say he has a lot of anger. You're using anger as a noun to say the person has that. So, just a slight difference between the two. Kaiseta, hello, Bob. Hi, Kaiseta. When do people use the word cheers? What does it mean? Thanks. So, we don't use it a lot in Canada. When I hear other English speakers say it, I think they use it to say hi or bye. I think more to say bye like cheers mate and then they leave. So, don't quote me on that. I'm not an expert on using the word cheers. Uh, it's not used a lot in Canada but I do hear it when I watch British television uh, and Australian television a little bit as well. Uh just give me a sec here. Um not having a problem. I'm just checking something for a sec. Um let's see here. May, uh, should I put you on I should put you on river cam when I do that, right? Shouldn't I? Um Okay, let's get back to this. Where was I here? Um Ah, I'm clicking all the wrong buttons. Here we go. Alexandra, greetings, Bob. I love learning from you. Thank you so much for helping me in advance. The question is about the modal verbs, their functions and uses. Oh, that's a pretty broad category. Um so, we use a lot of verbs. I sometimes call them um helper verbs as well like I can eat. Um I should walk. Um all of those verbs they modify the meaning of the verb either to reflect ability uh to reflect something you should do that you have an intention to do. So, Alexandra, it's very difficult for me to explain that quickly during a live lesson. Um but you should break them into categories like learn how to use can, learn how to use could, learn how to use should and those types of things but that's a pretty a pretty broad uh category to explain quickly. So, sorry about that. I'm gonna skip that one. Um let's see here. This is from why change time and it's hey, Bob, can you show the usage of rocky and bloody? Thank you for always providing such great content. I wish you all the best. So, I personally don't use the word bloody except when I describe someone who's actually bleeding. Like if you have if your nose is bleeding, we would say you have a bloody nose. The word bloody is used in British English and other forms of English as a descriptor in other ways but in Canada, we don't do that. We usually just say, um, oh, he has a bloody nose. We wouldn't say something like, um, I had a bloody hard day at work. I think I use that right. It's just not familiar to me. Rocky though is used in a couple ways. The exact definition would be if you're driving on a road that has a lot of rocks, you would say the road is very rocky. By the way, rocky road is a ice cream flavor and I just started craving ice cream. Um anyways, never mind. Uh rocky can also mean anything that isn't going smoothly. Your relationship with someone you love can be a rocky relationship. That means you fight a lot or you don't always get along. So, a couple different meanings there for those two. Um from Islam. Hi, I am Islam from Uzbekistan and I have a little question about accents. So, how can I lose my accent to become as a Native American or Canadian speaker? Well, you don't want to try and lose your accent completely. That's a very challenging thing to do. I usually just recommend you work on reducing your accent and your goal should be to be understood. If you work really hard to eliminate your accent, that's great but it's a difficult thing for a lot of people to do. I speak French and it would be very difficult for me to eliminate my accent and to speak perfect French but it's not too bad for me to set a goal to reduce my accent. The best way to do that is to meet for you with a native English speaker or an English teacher on um or a non-native English teacher on something like Preply or Italki or Cambly. Someone who specializes in accent reduction and they will kind of give you some tips and pointers. It's a very specialized field uh in the teaching of English. There are a lot of English teachers that specialize in accent reduction. So, look for someone who can do that. 
let's see here. Lath says, I am, I, I can understand a lot, little fix there of what you talk but I can't speak easily. What should I do? Well, the best way to get better at speaking is to do a lot more speaking and whenever I say that, it sounds too simple and I feel bad because I feel like I'm just saying, just do more of it. Um, but there is some truth to that. Um, listening is really easy to do. It's really easy to do a lot of it. If you look at your week, you can decide to listen to English music, listen to English podcasts, watch English TV, watch English YouTubers. It's a lot harder to find someone who you can talk to. So, that's your number one job. Increase the amount of time that you have each week having English conversations. Okay, let's go to the river cam and let's get set for let's see here. We're gonna do members only chat. Give me one moment here to set that up. Members only and as I'm doing that, let me thank the 400 people who are watching. Thank you so much for being here and spending some time uh listening to me answer questions. By the way, um members only chat time is a time when those who have clicked the uh join button below. I'm not sure where it is on your computer or phone but there is a join button and there are people who have just decided they want to thank me and the way they thank me is to become a member and give me a little bit of money every month. Some people join for one month or two. I know one viewer said to me, they just join for one month every year and then they cancel their membership and then they join for one month the next year. I appreciate all of it. It is not required. It is only something that you should do if you want to thank me or if you want to support me. Um there's no restrictions. You get one extra video a week and you get to have your name in green but other than that, it's just a way to say thank you. Uh where was I gonna go? Oh, in the chat, here we go. Betty Lou, hi, the cutest teacher, Bob. What do you think is the best way to learn English through listening to English songs? Have a great time while doing this live stream. So, there's a few things about learning English using songs. Number one, use the fact that repetition works in your favor with music. It's very easy to listen to songs over and over again but don't get stuck listening to the same songs all the time. Here's something I do when I'm listening to French songs. I have a soundtrack of about 12 songs. I have a playlist but I change one song every week. I remove one song from the playlist and I add a new song. When I add a new song, I make sure that I read the words and try to memorize them using my computer or phone and then I try to sing along a little bit when I'm listening to that song. So, number one, you should listen to songs like 50 or 100 times but you should also change your playlist every once in a while. Snazzy, sorry I asked Brent earlier but now the question is for you. Oh, where's the question? It's a mystery. Maybe it will come up later. I'll see. Uh oh, Philosopho Mickey. Bob, I was watching your video and I realized you said something like coated donuts. Since then, I've wondered the difference between covered donuts and coated donuts. So, we don't, I don't know if I said coated. I'd have to check. Here's what we have. We have um dipped donuts. So, you can get a chocolate dipped donut or a maple dipped donut. And it has like icing on the top. We also have glazed donuts which are coated in sugar but I would call them glazed donuts. So, they're like there's a light coating of sugar on the whole donut. Not a powder though. It's more like a clear sugar. Like it looks a little bit like um like yeah, I just wanna say glazed. It's glazed. So, you have chocolate glazed, chocolate dip. And then of course, my favorite, the double chocolate which is a chocolate glazed donut. So, it's coated in sugar and then it has chocolate icing on top too. Very nice. Brent says, sorry, Snazzy. Snazzy says, no worries, Brent. I enjoyed your live stream. Uh Dulio says, hi, Bob. Do the you Canadians use the expression go bigger or go home? Yeah, we usually say go big or go home. We don't always say go bigger but uh yes, I have heard that phrase said. It means to do something really well or don't do it at all. One of the two. Um, Maria C. Hello, Bob. How are you? My question today is if there's an English word for the person that administers a love to hear. I would love to wait. I everything's moving. Let's see. The person that administers a building and 
form like a kind of consortium. So, someone who administers a building is usually called the landlord or the superintendent or the super is the short form for it. So, when you live in an apartment building, there's maybe, you know, three or four hundred apartments but one person who lives there is the superintendent or the super and they're just in charge of making sure everything works properly and getting things fixed. I think that's what you were talking about. Betty Lou, do you think that radio station will die eventually? Why or why not? I would definitely love to hear from you. I don't know but the only time I listen to the radio is when I'm driving in my car. So, as long as we still have radios in cars and no other solution comes along, um I know you can play music off your phone in your car but that's the only time I listen to it. So, maybe we do listen to the radio when we work as well though when we make bouquets. So, it might stick around. Uh let's see here. Uh Sergey, hi Bob. Earlier, I saw an interesting question in the chat. Difference between rock and stone. Pretty much the same thing. Um you can have a quarry and the quarry is for rock or the quarry is for stone. Usually, stone might refer more to you know stones are things we might use in building like you might use uh a bunch of stones to make a little flower bed, the edge of your flower bed or something like that but um definitely very close to the same. Freddie Wolf, hi, Bob. Were you able to observe the blood moon yesterday in your area? It lasted more than three hours. The next even longer is planned in the year 2664. I can't wait to observe it and you. Well, I won't be around then. No, I did not get a chance. I think you needed to go outside to see the lunar eclipse at like three or four a.m. and I was definitely sleeping by then. Modeg, speaking of accents, I've been trying to eliminate my accent but it's really hard. Sometimes when I speak English, I sound like Smeagol from the Lord of the Rings. Gollum, Gollum but I'm still on it. Well, I wish you all the best as you continue to do that. I'm sure that sounds very interesting when you sound like Smeagol. Uh yeah, buddy. Double chocolate says Brent. That is a good donut. Double chocolate. You you gotta like it. Uh Betty Lou. Hi, the cutest teacher, Bob. Some people like to have pictures during a trip which they think will leave good memories or is it better to live in the moment? Which one do you prefer? When I go on a trip and if I'm on a trip by myself or with Jen and I want to show pictures to people when I get home, I will take a lot of pictures but when I go on a trip with Jen and all my kids, if we go on a little trip, I usually just enjoy the moment. I don't take, I don't always remember to take pictures. So, it depends um on if I'm planning to show people the pictures when I get home. Let's see here. Audie says, hi, teacher Bob. It's so funny for me on my country's time was 11 p.m. I was watching English football in that time. I was sleepy. I turned off the TV and before I turned off the phone, I saw your bell that wake me up. Well, hopefully, you still get a good night's sleep sometime, Audie. Maria C says, thanks, Bob. No problem. Mode eggs and when you pronounce heartily fast, it sounds a bit like hardly. It does, doesn't it? I pronounced it hardly. So, there is a little bit of the hardly, hardly. I do just a little bit like hardly but you're right. It sounds like hardly. Hardly, hardly. Uh Rod says, I need some glazed donuts now. Yeah, that would be good. I might go out and get donuts later today. Uh interesting story has joined and become a member. Thank you, interesting story uh for joining and supporting the channel. Zeev, I'm a member and my name is not in green. Zeev, your name is definitely in green on my screen and you have a crown beside your name. So, something is working correctly and you were able to comment during members only chat. So, I think it's working. Um let's see here. Betty Lou, hi, the cutest teacher, Bob. Would you like to have a perfect memory? Why or why not? I personally think it's unbelievable and unreachable, unreachable to have so. So, I don't know. Here's the thing. When I read a book that I really, really like, then I'm actually happy that in about five to 10 years, I can read the book again. Sometimes five years is too soon but there's a few books I have read multiple times in my life. So, I think it is nice to forget things a little bit. So, I've read The Hobbit and I've read The Lord of the Rings um three times in my life and I think I'll read those books again in about five years or so. Um so I think it's good. Uh Zeev says 
but not in the chat. Interesting. It might have to do with your settings, Eve, but you're definitely a member if you can chat right now. Uh philosopher Mickey Bob, when you say someone is cranky, does it mean someone is in a bad mood? Yes. Grouchy, cranky, uh all mean that you're in a bad mood. The other day, I was quite cranky. I was very grouchy. So, I tried to just not talk to people at work. I tried to just work on my own somewhere. Betty Lou, I have an English exam tomorrow. I hope it goes well. Can I just beg good luck from the cutest English teacher in the world? Anyways, it's 12, 14 p.m. in my area. It's high time to stop being a night owl. Well, Betty Lou, I hope your test goes really, really well. Uh I'm sure you're prepared and I'm sure you'll do great. So, best of luck on that test tomorrow. Uh Betty Lou says, I promise I only stay up late for Bob. Well, thanks, Betty. Modes, thank you, pensive Mr. Bob. Yeah, that was my thumbnail. I was trying to think of new ways to make a thumbnail. Audie, thanks, my love and respect, teacher. No problem, Audie. Interesting story. Hi, Bob. How are you? Learned English for a long time. Your videos help me to improve my English level. Can you give subtitles below on screen? So, there is a way to turn subtitles on while I'm doing the lesson um but I'm still testing out whether I wanna do that. It used to happen automatically. There will be subtitles on this video in about 24 hours and that will help you a bit. But maybe I'll do a couple live streams next week with the subtitles on and we'll see how it works. The thing is they're just usually delayed by 10 or 15 seconds and I don't really find that helpful. But let me let me think about it. Modeg says, yes, watching Mr. Bob's lives is really worth the time. Thanks, Mode. Good luck on your test, Betty Lou. Snazzy, is my question not appropriate for this live stream, Bob? I don't know. Maybe I just didn't see it yet, Snazzy. Maybe that's the uh maybe that's what's happening. Maybe I didn't get to it. Unless you had it in the chat. Did you submit it with the form or with the chat? No, I don't see it in the form. So, where is Snazzy's question? I don't see it, Snazzy. Maybe Dave or Todd can find it or you could just ask it again. Um see, all I see is the sorry, I asked Brent earlier but now the question is for you and then I don't see the actual question, Snazzy. So, I don't know. Kaiseta. I like to read Charles Dickens. Bob, what about you? Do you like this author? Thank you. That is an older author. I find when I read older novels, um sometimes it's hard for me to understand them. So, I usually like to read things that are more current. Even as an English speaker, I find something like that difficult. Very cool. Snazzy says, if so, you can skip it. If I find it, I'll see. Uh Mickey says, Bob, is it easy to imitate the British accent for Canadian people? No, I am not good at it. Just wondering because we Brazilian people kind of do that with Portuguese accent. Um we'll do it sometimes but not I can't do it very well or or I can't I can't I can't do it very well but I can understand British English quite easily. So, sometimes people learning English are worried about which type of English they should learn but you should know that most English speakers can understand every English accent quite clearly. Uh Dulio, hey Bob, I'd like to explain that in yesterday's lesson, I meant to talk about lightning instead of thunder. I wrote by mistake. So, yes, yesterday we did a lesson on natural resources uh and Dulio was asking whether we could generate power from lightning and I had said, yeah, lightning, thunder comes after lightning. Lightning, it's a lot of energy in a very quick, a quick amount of time. So, I'm not sure we could do that. Let's see here. Dave says, I can't seem to find it in the form either. Maybe you can ask it again in the chat, Snazzy. Yes, Snazzy, I can't see any questions from you in the chat. It's a mystery. It's a mystery question. <laughs> Let's see here. Sita says, Bob, I'm late today. Just getting here to say thank you. Hi, Sita. Good to see you. Betty Lou, I can't agree more. It's worth everyone's time. Snazzy, here's my question. How to correctly use the word ass in different situations. Example, I'm a smart ass. Get your ass back in there. I was trying to save your ass. So, ass is very much an informal, it's not really slang but it's definitely used when you are familiar with the people you are talking to. So, I would use the word when I'm talking to my brother or a good friend. 
I wouldn't use the word ass at work, okay? It's not a bad word but it's not a proper word either to use in a workplace. Um but definitely when someone is like if one of my kids is constantly answering my questions but giving me silly answers, I would say they're being a smart ass. Um if I was really angry um at someone, I might say, you know, get your ass out of here or get your ass over here. I wanna talk to you. Um and then what was your last example? Oh, to save your ass. Yeah. So, if someone was gonna walk across the street, like if my brother was gonna walk across the street and there was a car coming, I would grab his coat and pull him back because I would wanna save his ass. So, again, it's yeah, how would you describe it? It's not slang. It's definitely very informal, snazzy um but very common by the way. If you watch English TV, you'll probably hear it in some of our modern TV shows. Sita, good to have you here. Uh, kind lady. Ricardo says hello to everyone. Hi, Ricardo. Betty Lou says to Mode Eggs, thank you for your kindness. Um give me one sec here. Went a little overtime on the members only chat. So, I'm just gonna make the switch back to subscribers and then I will finish off the questions. Um let's see here. Kaiseta. Bob, I understand you very well about Charles Dickens. I read it in Russian language. It's my home language but it is a modern language and you read these novels in your home language and it is old. Definitely old. A Tale of Two Cities, those types of books. Um definitely hard for me to understand if I read them. Um Rod says, interesting story. Nice to meet you. Yes, thanks for joining. Interesting story. Then Mode Ag says to Rod the English, tell Snazzy to watch your favorite video from Interactive English. There we go. Yes, maybe Interactive English. Did they do a, a lesson on that? That would be worth watching. Snazzy says, I'll check it out. There we go. Hopefully, that helps you, Snazzy. Hopefully, you get a sense of how English speakers use that word. Um yeah, I'm wondering if I should have done the lesson outside. This bush looks like it's shaking in the wind a little bit though. So, I'm not sure. I'm sure I would have been freezing my butt off. Now, I could use that other word snazzy there as well. I could say I'm freezing my butt off but I could use this the word you were asking about as well in that phrase. Mirage, please describe the word witty and savvy. Which one has the meaning of smart and clever? So, witty means to tell jokes but in a way that shows you're really smart. So, when you tell a witty joke, it means you understand the language and the situation that you make a witty joke. When you're savvy, it means you understand the situation. So, someone who is savvy might um they might just be really good at um surviving out in the wilderness. They're just really savvy about how to survive in in the woods or the forest without food. So, it means to be knowledgeable. Um but yeah, they're both witty is more about being funny in a smart way. And savvy is more about being very knowledgeable in a situation. Next question from Kelly. Hi, Bob. Could you explain the meaning of the phrase which goes see us through the worst of it? The out doesn't go there. Thank you. When you see someone through the worst of it, um it means that you spend time with them or you give them money when they're in a bad situation. So, let's say my brother lost his job and I would say to my brother, you know, the next few weeks are gonna be hard but I'll see you through the worst of it. I'll give you a ride to go look for a new job. I'll buy you some food. Um I'll give you a little bit of money. I'll see you through the worst of it. So, basically, when someone's life, when they go through a bad part in their life, it means that you're kind or helpful to them in that situation. Claudia, hi, teacher Bob. Today, I'd like to understand the differences between topic and argument. Thank you also for your last live video. So tricky and interesting. Yeah, it it was a fun video. Remember, I've said to all of you, my goal isn't to do the most interesting topics but to do all the topics. So, we did natural resources yesterday. I liked it. It was fun to talk about coal and oil and sunlight. Um so, here you go. Topic is a general term for something like a lesson, okay? An argument is a term when two people are going to present different opinions, okay? So, slight difference there. If I said um Brent and I from Brent from American English, we are going to do 
have a discussion about natural resources. The topic would be natural resources but there's a chance that we might present different arguments about parts of it. Brent might argue that global warming is very, very important to think about right now and I might say global warming is something that rich people should solve because they have lots of money. We would present different arguments on the topic. I hope that made some sense. I should argue with Brent sometime about something. Uh let's see here. Next question from Anna. In Italy at school, students have got a special booklet to write any notice from school. What's this booklet called in Canada? Thanks, Bob. So, the books that students used to have which most don't anymore because they all have laptops but they used to have a textbook which is all the information for the class. So, it's a really thick book. They might have a workbook which is a collection of you know practice exercises they could do. Fill in the blanks, multiple choice and they might have what we in my area call an agenda. It has a couple different names in English but we call it an agenda. That is a book with all of the days and dates for the school year in it where students can write things like test on Friday and they can write it on Friday. So, we would call it a, an agenda. It can also be called a student planner or a planner uh, or just a, a planning notebook. A bunch of different ways to refer to it. Sihat. Hi, Bob. I am Sihat from Ankara, Turkey. Which academic exam do you prefer? TOEFL, IELTS or Pearson, etc. Which exam is easier than others? Thank you. Have a good day. So, first of all, I don't know enough about these tests to say which one I would prefer. I took the CEFR exam for French which gives you a level of A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2. Um and so, I'm familiar with that test but they are all very similar. What I can't, should I, should I take the English test? Would that be bad? Should I like actually register to take one of these English tests someday and then pretend I don't speak English and then I should make a video on it. I don't know if that would be nice. Maybe, maybe I'll do that. What I do want to do though and I haven't done yet is uh study what those tests are like a bit more and make some lessons on them. I'll think about that over the next few months. Nerdy Night Owl says, hey, Bob, what's up? Can you show the usage of beg and mercy? Also, is the word usage countable? Thank you as always for answering my questions. So, when you beg for something, it's when like sometimes kids beg for a cookie. Like, can I have a cookie, please, please, please? Can I have a cookie? I'm really hungry. Can I have a cookie, please, please, please? So, begging is like asking for something over and over again. Um when you show mercy, the best example would be let's say uh you're watching an old TV show and there's a king and someone has stolen from the king and they bring the thief before the king and the king says, you may go free. That would be the king showing mercy. So, there you go. Um usage. That's the next question, right? Uh the action of using something. So, I don't know how it would be countable or not countable. Um I would certainly say usage just refers to the act of using something. Like the water usage by that company is enormous. So, definitely not countable there. We just know they're using a lot of water or electricity usage has gone up because the weather is colder. So, again, kind of a generic way or a general way to refer to an amount which doesn't refer to specific units of that amount. From Hafiez, what are tips for understanding double negatives such as not unlike, not dissimilar, less unhealthy? I always get confused. It's like trying to solve maths for me. Well, just ignore the not part, okay? So, if you say like, well, that's not unlike the time I went uh to work. So, you ignore the not and un part and it means like, okay? So, if you said, I have a van and when I started in the winter, it takes a while to start. I would say, well, that's not unlike all the cars in Canada. So, remove the not, remove the un and then say it again. That's like all the cars in Canada. Um and then same with not dissimilar, I would say is similar. Um I hope that helps. Less unhealthy would just be healthy. I think apples are less unhealthy. They are healthier. Maybe healthier is a better way to say it. Claudia, 
Is it right to say I went looking for my lost dog? Yes and that's also sad. I hope you find your dog. I'm sure it's just an example sentence but yes, Claudia, I went, where were you? I went looking for my lost dog. You could also say I was looking for my lost dog um would mean exactly the same thing. Um where were you yesterday? I was looking for my lost dog. I went looking for my lost dog. Both correct, both used all the time. Probably 50-50 chance between using one version or the other. Mateus, I have difficulty speaking English but I can read, write and understand what they speak. How can I improve my speech? Well, first of all, the fact that you have um that you can read and write, write in particular is great. Writing is a step towards speaking better. So, you have input and you have output when you're learning a language. Input would be things like listening or reading. Output would be things like writing or speaking. The fact that you can write and it sounds like you can write well means that you might just need more practice doing a lot more speaking. Sometimes it's hard. It's easy to find lots of things to read in English. It's easy to find lots of things to watch or listen to and it can be fairly easy to write on your own but you need to find a person to talk to. 30 minutes a week or an hour a week. Uh, There is a link to a website called Preply below. There's also places like italki and Cambly that can help you out. Nanny has the next question. Hi, teacher Bob. My question is, what should I do to get a scholarship to study at university as a freshman in Canada? Well, I would go to different university web pages and search for scholarships for international students or just go to Google and search for scholarships for international students studying in Canada or who want to study in Canada and information should come up. I'm sure there are scholarships like that. Um Elsa, why do we learn the irregular verb learn? Learn, learnt, learnt and I see learned everywhere because in Canada, we use learned and in Britain, they use learnt and let me just double check that for a sec. Learnt and learned, it's a regional thing. So, it's going to depend. Um let's see here. Learned is generally accepted as the correct spelling in Canada and the United States. So, learned with the D whereas learnt is generally accepted as the correct spelling in the UK. So, there you go. That's why there is a difference. There's a British spelling and there's an American or North American spelling. Um I don't use learnt. Like he learned that in school. Usually I would say, ah, oh, he learned that in school. Uh let's see here. Guy, how to understand the expression to make a hash? I don't know that expression. Maybe it's British. It's not familiar to me. Number two, do taunting and teasing mean the same thing? Somewhat. Teasing is when you're bugging someone, you're being mean to someone um just because you want to be mean to them. It's not nice. Kids often tease other kids or they'll tease a dog. Uh taunting is usually teasing with the intention of getting a physical reaction. So, when you taunt a dog, you might be trying to get it to bark or to snarl at you. So, it's a little more serious to taunt but they do both mean you know to disturb, to bug, to aggravate someone. Alex says, hello, Bob. Could you please say how Canadians pronounce the word about? Do you pronounce it as a boot or about? I don't, I'm not familiar with how to pronounce those. I say about. It's a little bit, if you listen to it, it's about. It's very round in the O sound, about. Yesterday, I was out and about in my boat. It's my favorite saying. Um, Mode in the chat says, even if you say learnt in a North American, North America with the flap T, it'll sound like learned. That's correct because when I say learnt, I have to intentionally think about making a T sound at the end. But if I was speaking quickly, if I was reading a sentence, a British English sentence with learnt in it, I would say learnt. Learned. He learned. He learned that last year. Uh here we go. Feel. Hello, Bob. Is this sentence correct? I inform you that our team is contacting you early next week. Yes, I would probably say I want to inform you that our team will be contacting you early next week. 
that sounds a lot smoother. Your sentence is not incorrect but if I was saying it, I would say um yeah, I'm just calling to inform you that our team will be contacting you early next week. Um you can use is. Sometimes we use the present tense to talk about the future but the most correct way to say it and the smoothest way to say it would be to say I want to inform you that our team will be contacting you early next week. Let's see here. Manoush, Bob. Sir, where do you live? Which city? By the way, I am also coming as an international or an intentional. I think it should be international student to Canada in December 2022 from India. I live outside the city. I live closest probably to Hamilton, Ontario um but I kind of live in the middle of nowhere. So, let's see here. Rajab, I would like to know the meaning of tete a tete and when to use it. We use this when we're talking about like a meeting. Like, we need to have a tete a tete to talk about that. It's not a common phrase in English anymore. It's borrowed from our uh French cousins. Um I'm just looking up the frequency of use in Canada right now with Google Trends. Yeah, the graph is very low. So, and then meaning is a private conversation between two people. I haven't used tete a tete uh at all. I think in my whole life. I know what it means. If I read it in a book, I would know what it means. Um but uh definitely, it's one of those French phrases that we use in English like deja vu, um tete a tete, uh joie de vivre. Um there's a few other ones that we use. Um I should do a little lesson on that, shouldn't I? I think I did a bit of a lesson on uh words we borrowed but maybe I'll do another one someday. Um let's have a look here. Hey, um I'm gonna wrap this up everyone. It is 12 o'clock here. It's time for me to have some lunch and to get a few things done. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for hanging out for an hour. I hope I explained most of the uh answers clearly. I know there were a couple where I think I stumbled a little bit to explain it well. You know that grammar questions in particular, um it takes a lot of time for a teacher to think about how to explain a grammar question properly um and some of the grammar questions could actually be like 20 or 30 minute lessons. So, sorry about that. I know there were three or four where I didn't do a great job but um it's not all about doing a great job though. This is as much about just enjoying each other's company. It's about giving you an opportunity to chat with each other in the chat um and I think that's valuable as well. So, for those of you that don't do that, do remember that there's this great group of people, members and non-members, uh subscribers who hang out in the chat and talk to each other in English. It's fun to read but you should say hi to them once in a while. They're really nice people. Anyways, have a great weekend. Uh, I plan to have a great weekend as much as I possibly can. Uh enjoy yourself. Thanks to Todd and Dave for moderating once again. Thanks to Mode Eggs and Lolly Lolly and Juan and Snazzy and Rod the English teacher and Brent from American English with this guy. Uh Lolly Lolly, Mariposa, Kaiseta, Wanda Prado, Audi. Let me scroll back again. Eugene just said, I will install new electrical water tank for my customer today. Very cool. You must be busy if you do electrical work, Eugene. There are not enough people who can do that in Canada. Uh bye to Sita and Hallen and Mollen and Roger and I'm gonna stop saying bye to people because there's too many to say bye to. Uh remember, if you're one of the 429 uh who are watching, please remember to subscribe. I think you'll enjoy being a subscriber and uh I will see all of you Tuesday with a new video. It's just a short one this week and uh next Friday with a lesson. By the way, next Friday's lesson is on colors but I'm not gonna teach like red, orange, yellow. I'm gonna teach words like palette or swatch or spectrum or visible spectrum. So, when you see next week's lesson pop up and you see that it's about colors, it's not a lesson for kids. It's very advanced words and phrases we use to talk about colors. I think you'll like it. Infrared. Do you know what infrared is? I'll talk about that on Friday. Anyways, Bye. Have a good weekend. I will uh see you as uh as time comes and goes by. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I'm not making